Okay, let's sketch the par parametric curve associated to the vector function r of t equals cosine of t times vector i plus sine of t times vector j plus t times vector k. Now, this same vector function instead of an ijk form could be described r of t equals angle bracket cosine of t comma sine of t comma t close angle bracket, right? That's the other notation. Just trying to get you comfortable back and forth with ijk summation notation versus angle bracket, right? So um, you'll notice that lots of things have lots of different notations and it's just something for us to get used to a little bit. Um, this vector function, by the way, corresponds to the parameterization x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t, z equals t, right? All you got to do is just take the three things that are separated by commas in the angle bracket form and just split it out into an x formula, a y formula, and a z formula. So let's try to think about what this really looks like, right? This one's tough because it's 3D, but even though it is a little more challenging because of the three-dimensional nature instead of the two-dimensional nature, let's just not think about the z equals t part yet, right? Let's just think about x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t, because that, that should sound a little more familiar, right? x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t. You can interpret t not just as time, but also as angle. Um, you should get a circle, right? Unit circle. But now let's think about t as time. Okay, we thought about t as angle, but now let's really think about t as time, as that's going to help us figure out what is going on with z equals t, right? So in z equals t, I would just say, let's interpret it this way. As time increases, the height increases also. Like, the, the, the point that is described by the parameterization, if t is 5, like 5 hours after the experiment starts, Okay, so you end up, you know, there's this point on the unit circle somewhere, five radians, I guess, and that's a certain point on the unit circle, but not just on the unit circle, but maybe the, a point that's raised above the unit circle because now the height should also be five. So you have this shape, um, this projection, this specific view or what angle we're looking at this 3D picture from. Um, I hope it's kind of helpful. It's sort of like uh, slinky that just goes on for and ever, ever and ever, because we didn't say that t stops and ends at certain values, or we didn't really set a domain for this function. We didn't restrict. But this con continues going on forever and ever, but I had to make the computer stop, otherwise it will squish the picture even more. Okay, let's find a... Um, but by the way, this picture is, in some sense, we don't want to say... I guess the graph of the vector function, but rather this is the path that the associated parameterization would f would fall along. So um, all of these points here, you know, you travel along that the, you just imagine a bug that is traveling in the shape of a if we stood uh, way up where z is very positive, like z is a million or something, you look down on the xy plane, you would only if you had no depth perception, you just kind of um, you know, close one eye or something, you would just see what appears to be a bug just traveling in the shape of a circle. If you open both eyes to get a little depth perception, you'll notice that the that not only is the bug seemingly traveling in the shape of a circle, um, but is also getting closer and closer to you because the bug is raising in height. Okay, let's find a vector function that represents the curve of intersection between x squared plus y squared equals 1, and the plane 3x plus 2y plus z equals 1. This is a challenging question. Um, when you look at x squared plus y squared equals 1, I'll be honest, I hope you thought what I thought, that we're just talking about a circle at first. That is actually incorrect. If we were just in the xy plane, we would be talking about a circle. However, the other equation has a z in it, and that means that this previous equation should be thought of as living in, as describing points in three-dimensional space, even though there's no z. So what is this? Well, this first equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1, doesn't even mention z. So it doesn't really care what z is. The first equation doesn't anyway, right? So you should imagine that circle of radius 1 drawn on the xy plane, drawn where z equals 0. But there's no, there shouldn't be a, an assumption that z equals 0. Just draw that circle in your mind first. And then because z doesn't it doesn't matter what z is, at least to the first equation, the shape of x squared plus y squared equals 1, you just ought to propagate the picture of that circle up and down, 
right? So Z can be anything. It's basically if you were to draw a unit circle, just keep stacking more and more unit circles on top. Okay, so let's, um, I feel like that description is really difficult. Um, so we're going to click to see a picture in a moment. But this is kind of, this is, you could say an infinite cylinder. It's like if you had a soup can and you removed using a can opener, the top circle and the bottom circle. And then you take that the, the metal that's left, uh, basically uh, the metal that is touching the label of a soup can, and you keep doing that above and below. Or in other words, I guess you could, uh, at least as far as a, an attempted picture, <laughs> take many soup cans and do this, right? So remove the top and bottom and uh, all these cans of the same size and just glue the can so that you have this really huge telescope, I guess, in a sense, that just goes on forever and ever above and below, right, in the vertical direction. Um, but then there's this plane. And so this plane is going to intersect this infinite cylinder, and you're going to get a shape that looks like this. So I will rotate this around. What you see is um, in uh, reddish color is the computer's attempt at trying to draw that infinite cylinder. If I use my mouse cursor to to kind of zoom out on the picture, you can kind of see more of it. Uh, and then I'll just, uh, let me do a quick free spin again. Um, and then in teal, you see the equation of a plane with normal vector 3, comma, 1, comma, sorry, 3, comma, 2, comma, 1. Okay, those two things intersect to create sort of what looks like an ellipse. It's not technically an ellipse, but it looks very, very much like an ellipse to us. Let's go back, right? So I'll say that the cylinder and the plane intersect in a tilted circle. Now, let's actually create a parameterization or a vector function for that tilted circle. By the way, if we just looked at that circle that's here, you know, so, so some of it's actually living underneath the xy plane. So just here we're looking from below. But if we take this circle and project it onto the xy plane, meaning let's just look at that circle from here, or so again, it's not a circle. This, but this, the intersection, which kind of looks like an ellipse, it's a fake ellipse technically. But if we take that and we look from over here, from now I've got the the blue z-axis facing straight towards us. Um, sorry, we've lost that part of the picture. I got to tilt it a little just so we can see. The shape we're going to see would be a circle down on the xy plane. We would see x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t, z equals zero. But we don't want that circle, which we are seeing the shadow cast of on the plane, on the on the plane z equals zero, the xy plane. We don't want that. What we need to do is unproject. So it was helpful so that we found what a viable x formula and a viable y formula is, but what would z be? Well, remember the point that we're trying to get, if it's the intersection of the, the cylinder and the plane, it needs to belong on the plane. And so all I did was I solved for z up here, and you have z equals 1 minus 3x minus 2y, and I just substituted our x formula, cosine of t, and substituted our y formula, sine of t. So that's why this looks so funky, z equals 1 minus 3 cosine of t minus 2 sine of t, right? It's just taking the equation for the plane, solving for z, substituting x and y. That way, all of the formulas, x, y, and z, all happen to just be formulas that involve t. And then here's a new link. So I, I've asked the computer to draw uh, this parameterization, cosine of t, sine of t, 1 minus 3 cosine of t minus 2 sine of t. And that's in a new tab right over here. Okay, so this in, in this kind of grayish, blackish color here is the computer's Whoops, let's see. I mean, I just typed in, I literally typed in cosine of t, comma, sine of t, comma, uh, 1 minus 3 cosine of t minus 2 sine of t, um, hoping that it would work. It should have <laughs> And you'll see that this, what, again, appears to be an ellipse, it's technically not, or even though it, it's very close to an ellipse, I'm sure, but that right there, it, let me zoom out a little, is the intersection of the cylinder and the plane. 
Okay, so I have done a sort of poor job with this slide in that I provided a parameterization here, but the question at the top said find a vector function. Oops, uh, I'm not going to redo the slide. Uh, instead, I'll just describe this. This should now be r of t equals, and then in angle brackets, cosine of t, comma, sine of t, comma, 1 minus 3 cosine of t minus 2 sine of t. Hope that's not going to bother you too much.